I love making videos for you guys, but setting it up, breaking it down, putting the lights together, audio, making sure the audio sounds right, it is a daunting task. And I thought to myself, there's gotta be a solution out there that makes it simple, convenient, and fast for me to churn out more and more content for you guys. And long behold, a godsend. I found it. DSLR Video Shooter has a video out there on creating a one-man band video setup with some of the equipment I've already had here in store. And I went from looking like this to looking like this. Really cool, right? Well, let's not waste any time and jump right on in so that you too can achieve these same results. Now, before we get started, I need you guys to hit that subscribe button down below, like and comment on these videos, let us know if we're doing a good job, and overall, just show a brother some love. That's all I'm asking. Okay, so going into this, I knew I had a ton of random equipment in my closet. And I just decided, you know, this is a great time to not only see what I have and see what I don't have, but also give me a reset opportunity to just take everything out. And then once we got everything that we needed, organize it back in there and kill two birds with one stone. I had majority of the stuff here. I had C stand, I had a monitor stand, I had uh, made for clamps, Hollywood heads, I had my light, I had light stands, I had smaller lights. We decided to use the guest bedroom because I can store all the equipment right there. So convenience factor was definitely taken into consideration. The bed here is actually taking up majority of the space. So I called in my fiance, I called in my sister's boyfriend, I asked them to come over and help with the setup. And this is a time lapse that you're seeing of just kind of talking, conversing with them, seeing what is the best positioning of the bed to maximize the amount of space that I have when coming up with this vlog video uh, setup. All right, so now that we got the bed arranged, it's time to pull out all the equipment. So I have a C100 Mark I with the Sigma 30 mil lens. This was like the best focal length with the amount of space that I had between me and the camera. The Forza 60 light, which is my key light coming in right here, I put a A crate on it from an old aperture light. Uh, I'll show you later how I did that. But um, using the A crate to kind of focus all the light here and not spill on the background was very important. I am using a, a small photo head with the C100. I'm powering everything into the back wall over here. I'm using a ME66 by Sennheiser as my shotgun mic, um, and it's actually locked right into the camera. As creatives, the less amount of time you can think about or setting up or breaking down, the more time you can invest into your creativity. So I figured this is a great start. If I can have the shotgun mic connected to the camera, then I don't have to sync audio at the end and makes it a lot easier for me to crank these videos out. So here are some of the pain points that I have when making this setup happen. The first pain point is that I'm stuck, well, I'm not necessarily stuck in this corner, but appealing wise, visually appealing, this is the best that I could achieve uh, within this room. So it's a very small room. I used the 30 mil focal length because that gave me, you know, enough space above and the back. Also with a smaller aperture, this is I think on one four, I could just, you know, pop myself out and also give you, you know, just some depth. The second pain point that I had was this light is freaking awesome. However, I started to see this very weird shuttering thing inside of the C100. And I think it's because of the LED and the refresh rate on it. So I had to take the shutter speed and boost it to one 100th of a second. Now, obviously when you do that, you lose light. I was okay with doing that as opposed to maybe pulling out my bigger light or whatnot. I, this one, this light I love and I will highly recommend um, this light. It is a whopping 280 bucks and it's definitely one of the best investments I've ever made. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna take the time and turn off all the lights I'm gonna shut everything down, and then I want you to see one by one what each light does and how it helps achieve this final product. So the first light 
is the practical. I, I love practicals. I got this light for 15 bucks. I just thought it would be like a really nice um, light that I could have on my desk. It's also giving me a really nice edge light right here. That's opposite color of the daylight, which you guys know, you've seen in a lot of blog videos and whatnot. They complement each other really well. And I just said, hell, like it's a cheap light, might as well. Um, I don't know the CRI and I really can care less about it, quite honestly. Now, this light right here is actually a Quasar wireless light. Um, I have this, ooh, that's bright. I have that there. And as you can see, it, it's kind of complementing another edge light, but it's not as strong. And it's gonna definitely give a different definition than the key light here, all right? The third light is actually my computer light. Let's see if it turns on, there you go. Um, yeah, it's it doesn't do a lot, but it does enough. It gives a nice shoulder edge of lighting and, you know, makes me feel like I'm doing something on the computer. The next light is an actual another Quasar wireless light, but I put a green gel over it. Um, preference was, I like the green because it just threw more on the wall and, uh, Kind of reminded me a little bit of Star Wars, and I kind of like Star Wars, uh, especially green lightsabers. Those are my favorite. Awesome. Let me turn on the uh, Nanlite 60 so you guys can see that, but I'm gonna show you it without the egg crate on it first, okay? So here it is. So here it is without the egg crate. Um, it's, it's great lighting, don't get me wrong, but you see how it takes away from the green a little bit. Um, my room is just kind of subtly just flat. And I thought about it. I could have bought a egg crate online from Nanlite, but I just didn't want to waste any more time trying to make this setup. So what I did, which uh, here's one of my moments, is I took my Aperture um, Mini Dome 2 egg crate and I used, you guys heard of Staples? <laughs> um, I bought some Velcro and tried to actually glue it to this material and it would not stick. So uh, in my head, I just thought, hey, uh, why don't I just staple these pieces together and then put the egg crate on and see if that works. And you'll see now the difference between this and this. So the egg crate definitely focuses the light a lot better. Um, it makes that green pop up a little more and I just was, I was thrilled um, to be able to take my improvisation and my old days of not having the resources and just finding ways of uh, achieving the same goal without spending a crazy amount of money. So here it is, this is the final result. I'm really liking what I achieved right here. And I'm really happy that I kind of improvised on that last bit and stapled the egg crate to the Nan light. Yes, it's not the right one for it, but you know, you got to work with what you got. And that's one thing I want to kind of end this video with is you may not have these resources. You may not have everything, but find the tools that fit your budget and motivate yourself to put this together. You know, I'm making these videos because I care about you guys and I want you guys to be the best filmmakers and creative minds out there and I'll do whatever it takes. And now that I have a vlog video set up, I'm guaranteeing you guys there will be more videos on the way. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe and comment. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Dominique, this is Video Gear and we're out. Take care.